All right, you know the drill by now. If you like the videos, go ahead and hit that sub button for me. More than half of you guys that watch are not subscribed, so make sure to hit it if you haven't. Also, check out the Twitch if you're into that kind of thing. All right, guys, let's talk about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. All right, so first things first, I did not want to get this game. I was extremely hesitant. It felt like another gimmick game, a cash grab to toss into the ASIM horror genre as many other games have already done. I saw the beta, I watched it come and go. I paid no mind to it. The game came out, I didn't play it the first two days. I didn't really care to. But then the game was gifted to me and I said, you know what, fuck it. I hopped on a day before I planned to stream the game just to, you know, get a feel for things, to make sure I wasn't a complete bot when I went and streamed the game, aka the footage you're watching right now. I planned to play about an hour. Guys, I played the game 10 hours before my stream and 10 hours after my stream. My stream was 4 hours and 54 minutes. Without even knowing, I played Texas Chainsaw Massacre for a day straight. So, I obviously have some opinions. Um, Let's talk about it. Number one, let's get the simple things out of the way, the uninteresting things. The UI is fucking abysmal. The matchmaking system is horrendous, and I have to verify my game files every three games because of credentials invalid bug, which by the way, was announced to be fixed today, and it wasn't, I still had to do it every three games. But guys, I fucking love this game. It's not just another DBD knockoff. It's not just some lame game to add to the ASIM horror genre that's going to be forgotten about in six months. Now, let's keep in mind it is gun interactive. We know them already from Friday the 13th, but it really does feel like they put more effort into this game. Does it feel polished? No. Does it even feel finished? No, not at all. But does it feel fun? Yes. Does it feel immersive? Yes. Does it feel competitive? No, and I mean that in the best way possible, and that's my first point. Later on in this video, we'll talk about the comparing to DBD shit that everyone's been doing on the internet. It's so cringe, but anyways, one of my favorite, if not my favorite aspect of this game is that it's very killer-sided. That's the way a horror game should be. Now, am I saying DBD needs to take notes? No, DBD's its own game, and this is its own game. Again, we'll come back to that. Nothing I say is a jab at DBD, let me just make that clear now. This game isn't some PvP competitive game. You don't run tiles in this game. You play to stay alive. Now, there are some frustrating aspects that come with that. For example, the Sunny and Ana players that sit in a bush the entire game, do nothing for their team, try to make it out after everyone else is dead, and proceed to die as well. They are wasting everyone's time. Yours, mine, the killers, the survivors, everybody's time. Until Peepaw hits level five and the people standing still are revealed. I know I'm gonna say killer and survivor and some of y'all are gonna hate that, but I played about six hours of killer and about 18 hours of survivor. So I am a little inexperienced on killer still. Um, I know that Sissy is fucking busted. And I know that Hitchhiker is really fun to play. And I know that Bubba is definitely there. I do think with the right build, Bubba is really fun in this game, but the problem is Bubba's required to start a match, obviously because it's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game, you need a chainsaw, and a lot of lobbies full-on close before the game starts because nobody wants to play Bubba. I would say at least maybe seven times, I've just had a lobby completely close out, the timer goes to zero because nobody wants to play Bubba. Another thing that's really awkward is the way the skill tree works. I'm not gonna dive super far into it. If you know, then you know, the skill tree is a fucking disaster to navigate. Even once you're used to it, the idea of leveling your character back to zero to essentially re-level them the same way you just did to maybe get one different perk is incredibly frustrating. And say you got a random perk you really liked, then you can't really respec your character or you have to spam respec your character until you get that random perk again. I don't say this lightly, the character progression system in this game is shit. I I'll say it. Now, again, I fucking love the game. The gameplay, when it works, obviously, because it's ridden with bugs, is so fun. The gameplay I'm showing you was pretty early on to my TCM adventure, so I definitely wasn't my best gameplay or anything. But let me just make it very clear. I love the game. Victim feels incredibly scary. Jump scares happen actually pretty often due to the lack of a terror radius. All you really get is that frustrating vignette. 
I'm not even gonna lie, if there was an option to just completely turn the vignette off and I just play guesswork of where the killer is, I would prefer that. I'm gonna be honest, I would prefer that. The vignette is incredibly distracting and it takes up about 25% of your total screen space. It's just frustrating. It doesn't help you in any way. I don't know one person that would tell me, wow, this is a really nice and well-implemented addition. Now I understand the need for a visual tear radius. However, this game doesn't really have a tear radius, does it? But again, that argument's not fair because I know a lot of people would prefer some kind of visual indicator that a killer's close. Can it not be such visual clutter? I would prefer Times New Roman 12 point font at the bottom of my screen that says killer's close more than I would prefer the current vignette. Again, I'm nitpicking really hard. The perk design is super fun. The character movement is very unique. I'm not a huge fan of the mouse smoothing, but it does make for a more immersive experience, I would say. I love the four objectives. I love them. I am not here to offer balancing advice because I truly think the beauty of this game is that there's no balance. And I truly do mean that in a good way, not in a backhanded way. But the fuse box on Family House is completely unfair in terms of being too easy. Same with the car exit on gas station. There should never be an option to escape a game within one minute of the match starting, but here we are. That also has caused killers to camp a lot. Instead of making this game a chase game, which it is, I am finding the higher level I get, the more killers are just camping exits. They don't take any chase, they don't do anything the whole game. All they do is feed grandpa early on and then sit at an exit gate. I see a lot of people on Slaughterhouse cloning Otz's cook build which he posted, and listen, I love Ots to pieces, but it's frustrating watching competitive behavior getting implemented into an incredibly non-competitive game. Again, I love Ots to the moon and back, but something about a scrim strat going into TCM is just a little cringe. It's also why so many people hate DBD now. And again, I'm not here to tell people what to do. If you wanna go camp a gate and completely miss the plot of this entire game, you go do that. I am going to touch on balance for one second. I'm just going to say some things that are incredibly overpowered and incredibly underpowered. I don't care. I don't care that there's overpowered and underpowered stuff in the game. I love the game. Sissy is busted. Leland is scuffed. Max level Connie is a speed runner. And that's also my main. I love her. Cook is way too good at creating a stalemate. The same way Skull Merchant does and three stack killers instantly win no matter what the survivors do. Every single three stack you run into is a hitchhiker or a sissy and then a cook and a bubba. Johnny feels a little awkward. He feels like he doesn't really have a place in the game except one purpose, which is he's really good at finding rats. He's really good at finding those people that are crouching in a bush for the entirety of the game until they see an exit gate open. Sunnies, I'm talking about sunnies. Johnny's really good at finding Sunnies. <laughs> I feel like Johnny and Anna both fall a little flat in their execution. Their kits are there and they're good, but are they fun? Johnny is essentially just a murderous version of Cavalry from Deceive. And Anna can just tank more hits? I never found myself needing to tank more hits, if I'm being honest. The reason I also bring up Anna and Sunny so specifically is because that brings up what I think is the greatest flaw of this game. That flaw being the lobby and the character selection. It's essentially a, nah, -uh, I want it. Nah, -uh, I want it for Leland and Connie. <laughs> Same thing with Sissy and Hiker, or on the other side of things, people just not wanting Bubba and just, nah, -uh, you take him, nah, -uh, you take him. And then everyone leaves the lobby and the lobby closes. I don't think a character selection should ever make the lobby close due to a disagreement. <laughs> And I understand, they want the survivors to feel more like characters and not just cosmetics in the way DBD has it. And I fully understand that, but maybe find a different way to execute it. And finally, my last thing, stop comparing TCM to DBD. They play completely differently. There is little to no similarity except for the fact that there's killers and survivors, but that's like saying Call of Duty and Valorant are the same game because they both have guns. They don't play the same, they're not the same game. Stop comparing them. Anyways, y'all, I fucking love this game. I'll see you guys next week for a DVD video. Have a wonderful week.